Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we look at the week that was, we can see that all three major indexes, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500, all rose fractions for this week. We basically rose just above 1%. And what's important about that 1% is that we've ended uh, three consecutive weekly losses. And we talked about that in our last video, that we really needed to defend that 1300 price level for the S&P 500, or we're really looking at, you know, um, a move down to the 200 moving average. What was important this week? Well, um, we had China imply that they're willing to accommodate. Now, what's interesting about this accommodate and stimulate is that, of course, China has been the, the burning market for the past probably five years, if not longer. And now, as we're beginning to see a uh, slowdown in China, uh, to hear that they may be considered stimulating uh, and, and, you know, uh, quantitative easing is, is, is quite impactful. Um, and then we still have our concerns about what the heck is going on in Greece. Um, have they ha found a political coalition to govern the country? Um, the former prime minister says that they're, they're uh, considering leaving the Eurozone. Um, that's not necessarily news because they've been talking about that for a while. But of course, that sent the euro down to a, a multi-year low, and so um, uh, you know, so we, we saw uh, most of the week, especially uh, the beginning of the week, really being driven by the forex European news because um, it was very light this week on news. Uh, we did have some corporate news. We had Dell have its worst one-day drop in 10 years uh, due to their poor, poor earnings. We have J.P. Morgan, who last week, um, you know, went through their problems because of their loss of uh, from a trading unit. They said that they're not going to be doing their Sherry purchase purchase program for right now. And of course, we know the big corporate news of the week was what in the world happened to Facebook. And you can see there, um, I have You Make the Call Stocks. That's our other uh, YouTube channel, and we're putting together a video uh, today just about the Forex, uh, just about Facebook and uh, what happened, what you should do about it. Um, we're actually putting up three videos this week, one on Facebook, one on Google, and one on Apple. And again, the purpose of You Make the Call Stocks, that channel there, here in this video, we, it's, it's a weekly snapshot. You know, we just kind of give you our opinion of what happened and what to look for in the next week. Uh, you make the call stocks. We're going to give you specific information about specific stocks, mainly the stocks that we share in our synapses here. You know, when we pull up the charts and our market leaders, we look at about 10 stocks. So we're going to give you dedicated videos to each stock. And uh, again, the key is you make the call. Is it a buy? Is it a uh, short you make the call. We're not going to give you that information, but we'll give you the information that you should be able to discern where we believe the market is going. On the economic front, not much going on. Michigan sentiment on Friday did surprise to the upside to 79.3. So going into next week, we can see that there's really no earnings coming up. We're going to have to wait to the next season of earnings starting, and that's still not uh, still a ways off. Of course, the market is closed on Monday for Memorial Day. We want to certainly honor all of our veterans, uh, all of our servicemen. Uh, we are in great uh, in debt servitude for all that you do for our country. Um, Tuesday, we got consumer confidence. That should be interesting. Thursday, we got ADP. And of course, Friday, we have employment situation. So we do have some uh, economic data coming out this week that can move the market. Let's pull up the charts and take a look. 
Okay, so here we are looking at our market sentiment uh, stocks. Um, well, not stocks. Uh, we have currencies. We're looking at the dollar. We're looking at gold. And we're looking at crude oil. And as we zoom on in, um, you can see our dollar has gone to a new high. And how I drew this line was actually taking the time and, and zooming out a little bit, coming off the daily, going out to the weekly. And you can see this little consolidation in here. So that's where I drew in this line. So going back to the daily, we can see dollar new high for 2012, new high. Uh, again, well, let's go back to the weekly. Last time we've been in this range was back in uh, September. So um, new highs for 2012 and going back into uh, last year. And so certainly uh, looks really good. We pulled back to the looks like the 10 moving average and it kind of taken off here. So the dollar is still looking strong. Again, in virtual relationship with the market, the market's looking weak. The dollar is looking strong. Um, definitely uh, the dollar against the euro has been very well. Um, going over to gold, strong dollar. What does that mean for gold? Well, it's been weak. And you can see we've got this wick in here from September. We've got another wick in here from the end of December, beginning of January. Another wick in here from last week, and we're wicking in here again. So sideways to down here on gold. And finally, we'll take a look at crude oil. Great for our pocketbooks. Um, you know, so much talk about this rise, hitting the high in February, um, and we've really fallen off that. Not only did we fall... Um, you know, what was once resistance of 102 became support. Once we fell through there, we fell through there really quickly. And now we're coming all the way back down to $90. So we'll see if $90 holds up, of course, for us in our, our gas tanks. We want it to fall even more. But um, definitely down on crude oil. So here we are looking at the S&P 500 on a daily chart. And we can see what we talked about. We talked about this uh, pullback coming down here, and then we said we really need to defend this 1300 price level, and we've done just that. That's a nice psychological barrier, and we were so close to the 200 moving average, it looked like we were going to pull back to there. And so now we're in this range between about 1300 and about 1335, and we'll see how we can break out of that. Now, as we always say, What's the catalyst? And we certainly have a lot of economic catalysts this week, as we discussed earlier with uh, GDP, ADP, and our employment situation, and even consumer confidence. We can see on a daily our indicators are oversold and trying to come out of that low. Now, even though we did bounce, we didn't bounce really up. We're really now we we had a nice day on Monday and we've gone sideways for the past four days. So, you know, uh, we could see a continuation on this trend lower. We really need to get above, like I said, the 1335 to really see something. And also what we're in danger of, you can see all our moving averages getting ready to come down here and cross below 200 if we go lower, which is that, that death cross. You know, that we, uh, So we have to be careful of that. Now let's take a look at this on a weekly, and we'll see what we were referring to as far as we had our three weekly losses uh, last week really being the big one and then this current week we finally bounced right here at the 50 moving hours on the weekly again you can see the range but you're also seeing you know a nice falling three <laughs> pattern get ready to set up if we break and if we break you know there's no no reason to doubt that we could come all the way back down to 1200 we'll have to see our indicators on the weekly have more room to go to the downside and finally uh going to the monthly and we can see really how bad the month of May has been. Zoom in for us. At least now there's a little wick. Before there was no wick, and this was just a bad month for a May uh, for the market. Uh, we put in our, our, our doji here, and we pulled back. So, again, we're defending 1300 There's plenty of room to go to the downside on a monthly. Uh, we um, And so we have to be cognizant of that. There is room to go to the downside. But... What were our catalysts of us? Will we have some good job numbers? That certainly can change the mood. If we have bad job numbers, we really have to begin to look out for a further slide lower. Now let's switch over to the NASDAQ. And we'll zoom on in. And again, we can see 
our lower high is coming in. You can see we're trying to defend the 200 moving average, and we went up to our resistance of 2865-ish in that range. Unable to break that range. We need to get above that so we can get it back into this and oh, the range between 2860 and 3000. Um, indicators coming out of oversold. Uh, more room to the upside, but that's on the daily. When we come out to the weekly and zoom on in, we can really see sitting on that 50 moving average. We did defend it. Um, but you can see we were, we were actually getting close to oversold uh, on stochastics and RSI, although MACD has much room to go to, to the downside. So you might say that the NASDAQ responded uh, a little bit better. Um, going out to the monthly, again, seeing how weak the month of May is, has been for the market. This is the last week, so we can be happy for that. Uh, but there's plenty of room to the downside on the monthly chart. So again, we'll have to watch our catalyst. We we'll probably will be economic draft driven for catalyst this week. I don't know, unless some more Facebook news comes out. Um, so we'll see what the market gives us. As we look at our market leaders, we're starting off here with Apple. And again, I just want to start off by saying you make the call stocks. We're going to put those videos up this weekend. Check them out. Um, this week we're going to focus in on Apple, Facebook, and Google. So uh, Apple, we did see a little bounce here, um, and at least at least it, it got itself back above um, 550. We'll see if 550 hold as a support. So for right now, for Apple, I'm going to be nice and say sideways. Uh, how about Amazon? Amazon sideways it down. You, you see, we got a sideways action. We didn't really get a bounce out of this one. So I'm still going to say sideways it down here for Amazon. Nice move off the uh, earnings, but it's been pulling back ever since. And as they say, all gaps fill. All right, for our first time, we'll take a look at Facebook. Of course, we only have a couple candles. So for right now, I'll jump down to the hourly just to give us a look. Really get a sense of uh, what's going on here a little bit better and you can kind of see right now 31 is the uh, the fence line for buyers um, and maybe 33 is maybe the sellers uh, their value and where they're pushing it down so we'll have to watch for a break one way or the other on that one sideways I'll be nice and say sideways on Facebook maybe sideways to down um, what about uh, Google Google, um, as we zoom on in here, we can see you can really see this sideways action here on Google. Although we're breaking the 200 moving average on this one, so that's kind of important. So I, uh, you know, you really could say sideways to down. You can see this wick right here from March. And uh, we've actually broken that. All of this price action here bounced at this wick here. We we're trying to bounce at 595 is 594 is, and we've closed below that here on Friday. So sideways it down on uh, Google. What about uh, Goldman Sachs? Uh, Goldman Sachs gave up the ghost you can see the move we made here um, and but it did bounce with the market uh, what we talked about before is where we bounced was right at this little gap up right in here and that is exactly where we bounced once again maybe I'm going to go in here and draw that so you can kind of see what the channel that we're in between 95 and 100. Sideways, sideways are down on Goldman Sachs. IBM, IBM, double top in here, neckline here at 195. We've broken that um, here on Friday. So we're going to have to watch si sideways, almost sideways is down here on IBM. So you see our leaders are, you know, implying definitely some down. Now Intel really gave up the ghost here. It, it was really tracking really well with uh, IBM but since this high I mean it's really just given this all up. It made it all the way back down to the 200 moving average and it also made it back down to this little uh, swing low here 
and that's where our wick is. So short Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, survive. But really some big movement down, even though we're not a high value stock in terms of price. So when I say big movement, it's not big dollars, but it's a big movement for, you know, normally look at this range bound. Whoops. It's normally very range bound. Range bound here, range bound here, and just gave all of that up. Almost all of the 2012 move. Here's 2011. I mean, it really did give up all of its 2012 gains. Sideways to down on Intel. Uh, MasterCard, usually one of our stocks that has bucked a trend. It's bounced with Apple, but uh, you can see we had some support in here back in February. That's basically where we bounce now. But sideways on MasterCard and finally Priceline. Zoom on in here. Priceline broke its neck area right here. And what was once support became resistance. So this was support, was support, support, and now that we've broken it, it's now resistance. So sideways to down on Priceline. So almost all of our leaders are sideways to down, sideways at best. Um, not good for the market. We'll see if these catalysts can change the sentiment of the market. And again, you make the call stocks, our new uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to have some detailed videos just on uh, three of these, Apple, Google, and Facebook. In our education spotlight, we are continuing the discussion about why it's difficult for traders to follow rules. Now, we know that the best way to be successful is to be disciplined and focused and be rules-based versus emotion-based trading, and yet people can't follow their rules. And we gave three reasons last week. This week, we're looking at an inflexible mindset, scenario trading. We have to keep one main thing uh, in mind with regards to the stock market. It is uh, constantly evolving. Um, we have to consistently monitor our setups, monitor our trading plan to adjust with the market. As the market is trending, we have to have those rules, those setups available. As the market is consolidating, we need to have those rules, those setups available. Whatever the market is doing, we have to adjust ourselves to what the market is offering us as opportunities and then enter the market and allow that opportunity flow to work in our advantage. We cannot be stubborn. <laughs> uh, you cannot force setups that are no longer working. You cannot stay in trades that you should have been out of a hundred dollars ago. So inflexible mindset is one big reason why people are unable to follow rules. Lack of confidence in the method and strategy. We often talk about positive expectancy. The only way you can have positive expectancy is if you're back testing your system. Um, and then when you actually go to cast, use little cast to test the system and you build up your confidence. Or as we say, you build the psychological capital that you need to be successful. If you don't have confidence in the strategy, you won't be able to trade it right. And that's when you let your emotions come in and allow you. you'll stop out sooner than you should have. And then what happens? The market turns and does exactly what we thought it was going to do. Or you don't pull the trigger because you don't have the confidence. And again, you know, obviously, just self-confidence in general. Am I a good trader? Am I a bad trader? Am I a, a horrible trader? Emotions will ruin your profits. And so you have to take the time to develop that trader's mindset. And you can see all three of these have to do with our mindset uh, in order to be a successful trader. And that's what we do here at michaelglass.com. We help you develop that mindset so that it, you can adjust with the market and so that you can have that psychological capital to pull the trigger on each every trade. Again, make sure you check us out on YouTube. Uh, and as I said, uh, we have our new channel, You Make the Call Stocks, that's going to... Um, uh, put our videos up th uh, this week uh, on Facebook, Apple, and Google. You know about our resources. We have our one-to-one -one mentoring sessions. I was working with a new client this week, and he said to me, how did you get to be so good? And I gave him a very honest and direct answer. I've lost a lot of money. <laughs> and when you lose a lot of money and you really want to do this, you take the time to figure it all out, and we can help you figure it out. 
course, we have our managed force accounts, and we have our little tip here for you for those of you who are trading stocks. All of these will help you become a better trader, but more importantly, you still have to take the time to educate yourself and develop a trader's mindset so that you can have the psychological capital so that you won't be stubborn, so that you have confidence in what you're doing, and you have confidence in yourself. We can help you do that. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.